Hey guys, this is Jeff with another tutorial and we've got something very special worked up. We've got a mannequin leg that we're going to work on. Our mannequin legs, those of you who have ever seen us on our shows, know that our mannequin pieces are some of our best sellers and we get a lot of compliments about it. So we're going to talk you through how we do them starting with this leg right here. We've got a little paint on it and that sort of thing. Won't hurt it a bit. We've, one thing that we did do before we started taping is we capped off the ends. We had some spare prop foam that we used that we glued into here. You don't necessarily have to use that. If you have a mannequin piece that you're wanting to use, you want to close off the ends, you can use the like great stuff foam, any kind of expanding foam. You can use whatever trash you have laying around or whatever just to close up the hole because in our case, the mannequin legs are hollow. If you don't do something with it, and everyone, I hope, knows anyway, that if you cut a leg off, it's not hollow inside. It's full of meat and muscle and sinew and stuff like that. So you don't want to have a hollow leg. Now, the way we're going to start off doing this is we're going to use a method that we learned from Alan Hoffs and Still Beef Studios. We're going to wrap it with plastic. The reason why we do that is very simple. It's a whole lot simpler, faster, cheaper, and easier, and less messy than trying to mess with the liquid latex and going over it that way. And it really comes out with a really good look. So we're going to start off, you can use just about any type of clear plastic wrap, shrink wrap, anything like that. You can buy this at any box store or anything like that. We get a professional grade. It's thicker, it's heavier, and it takes a little more time to do. But by the time we get through with it, we end up having a thicker plastic. It melts together better, and it's a lot more durable. But you can use whatever you want. And we're gonna start just wherever you want. We're just gonna start wrapping. And it needs to be pretty thick by the time you get through putting it on here. The thicker it is, in our experience, within reason, the better it is, you don't want just one or two layers over any part of the leg or arm or torso or whatever it is you're wrapping up because if you just use one or two layers, it's gonna come out real thin and then when we go on to the next part, it's just not gonna look real good. This part right here, I would say, is probably one of the most time consuming parts to doing this. So now I have Scott laying down in front of me. And you're not gonna put that on. Oh yeah. Dude, don't put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna we're gonna he's gonna help me out. Watch this. <laughs> it's gonna be very awkward where you're fast forwarding through this because you're just smiling at random things because nobody knows what's happening down here. Oh, so, they're going so, to know. so Jeff's just like this. They're going to know. <laughs> they will know, I promise you, they will know. <clears throat> oh no, Jeff, because I'll f***ing get it. Ah. Oh damn. This is killing my back. Any Look at you laying straight on the ground. The owner of a haunted attraction is 100% glamorous and money making and all that other stuff. You should see what he's doing below me right now. Don't do it. So we wrap this up in several layers of plastic and we've got it pretty thick. You can kind of feel through the leg and just kind of tell how many layers are on there. Like I say, you don't necessarily have to go overboard with it, but you don't want it to be just one or two layers because the next step we're going to do is we're going to take the heat gun to this and we're going to melt this plastic onto this leg. And before we get started, we are going to talk just a little bit about safety. This stuff, when you do this, when the plastic gets hot, gives off a lot of smoke it can give off some toxic gases so make sure that when you do this you do it in a very well ventilated place preferably outside if possible if not do it in a large room that has plenty of air circulation so you're not breathing this crap that being said we're going to get started this part is very easy make sure we keep the gases where we want
these heat guns you can pick up. We picked this one up at Harbor Freight for like 10 bucks. So. You can see the smoke coming off of it now already. As the plastic melts, it'll stretch tighter against the surface of the leg. So it'll tighten everything up. You'll also get a few holes. We like to call them blowouts. You can call them whatever you want to. We actually want those. It makes it look more disgusting and distressed as opposed to a nice clean leg. If you can see what this is looking like when we get through taking the heat gun to it. It's kind of got some holes bunched up in a few places. That's what we want. Don't worry if you get it too hot in a couple places and, it's, and it looks burnt because you're going to paint over this anyway. So as you can see, the leg has got a pretty good coat of plastic on it. It's tightened up around the inner mannequin. We've got holes that we have melted into the plastic. We actually want that, that's a good thing. We've got a couple of places like right here, you can kind of see where it got a little too hot. Plastic kind of browned on us some. That's not gonna hurt a thing because we're getting ready to paint it here in just a minute. The only thing that I will recommend that I did not cover already is just remember that the heat gun gets up, ours anyway, gets up to about 1400 degrees. So it's not something to be toying around with. This leg is starting to cool down now, but right up in here, it's still pretty warm. So you wanna be careful how you're using it and what you're doing with it. And again, just make sure you use it in a well ventilated place before you start trying to do this because of the smoke that comes off of this leg when you start melting the plastic, probably not real good for you. Okay, the next step is to start painting. So we'll go into the other room, we'll start the next step. All right, I'm Scott with Scared City Productions. Uh, we're gonna kind of collaborate on, on this. We've got a couple of us uh, going to be doing different steps to kind of show you along the way how, how to do everything. Uh, Jeff's already uh, heat gunned everything up for us. Uh, my uh, step next is going to be uh, putting on the flesh tone, uh, and that'll be our base, uh, base coat. Uh, but we'll start uh, putting it on. We just use uh, just a regular old household uh, paint uh, you can use any kind of flesh tone it doesn't really doesn't really matter uh, where you get it just as long as it's a flesh tone type color you pretty much want to make sure you get into all the little the nooks and crannies it's not necessarily necessary to uh, cover the ends but I always like to put put a coat on the bottoms uh, just kind of help stiffen up the, the product in this case if it does get chipped or anything it it's not not showing all the way down to the to the plastic so just a couple little extra layers never hurts you want it kind of thick but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be real real thick on this this coat this is just just kind of your base coat and we're going to build layers upon layers uh, to get everything you know, kind of blend it in and all that, so. All right, we got our base coat on, and we'll give it just a couple minutes, and uh, we'll let it dry, and then we'll add the next uh, next step on. All right, we're back. Uh, the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna put on uh, red spray paint. Uh, again, we like using uh, Rust-Oleum. Uh, it goes a little bit further, and you only have to do one coat. So that's, that's one of the main reasons why we like, we like using this. So we'll put this on, uh, pretty much we're putting it on all the little deep spots that's, that's showing where we potentially have, you know, some blood or anything showing. So when you're using uh, spray paint uh, or any kind of uh, paint that's gonna give off any kind of fumes, uh, make sure that you uh, are pretty much in a well ventilated area because uh, these do give off a lot of a lot of fumes. Alright, we 
pretty much got it to where I want it. Um, we'll give that just a minute or two to dry before we go on to the next step. Uh, the next step, we're gonna pretty much kind of age it to make it look a little, uh, little nastier, a little dirtier. Uh, All right, this is Tony, and we're back. I'm here to do the next step. Uh, we're gonna darken it up, make it look nasty. What we're gonna use is some hickory gel stain. Uh, this stuff is pretty thick, and you want it to be thick. When you get it on there, just brush it on. Get it in everything, on everything. I know it looks like it's pretty well covered, but what we're going to do in a few minutes is we're going to wipe it off. And all these little burn spots, these little holes, these little crevices, I'm going to make sure you dab it in there. You want to make it thick. Go a little quick with it, but not too quick. The drying time on this stuff is different in different spots because, I mean, you know, here, if you're not getting a lot of it on there, it will uh, it'll dry a lot quicker than what will appear. Of course, that's another reason why you want to cover the whole thing and get everything in there. Alright, now what I'm going to do is just take some regular paper towel. What we're going to do is wipe some of it off. Yeah. And with your burn spots, your holes, little crevices here it'll collect a lot more in there what you want to try and do is get the middle of it out but leave it around the edge because it'll give it a nice nice look to it like that big monster right there that flesh tone to come back through. It's going to look a lot darker. But what you don't want to do, you don't want to get this stuff on you or anything you're wearing. So, probably use gloves. Because this stuff will stain, and when it stains, it is extremely hard to get off if it even comes off. But this particular step doesn't take a lot of time you can't really mess it up because if you end up wiping too much of it off you can always go back over it you want to make sure that you're blending the bottom half and the top half if you decide to do it one at a time for us it's just a little easier that way you're not worried about one part actually drying before the other part does at the end just make sure you give it one good wipe over to get all that extra out of there. Put in your low spots. Down here, your little burn spots. Make sure a little bit of that red still showing through. That's what gives it that nice consistency look of flesh and meat. And as I said before, one of the best things about this that you can do make sure that you're blending but there's nothing like having a prop that's four different colors or four different shades of the same color and sometimes while doing this particular method you might have a little bit of that plastic in these bigger holes that kind of pulls up a little bit be careful getting the paint underneath that you don't want to pull your plastic off but you want to try to get up underneath it because it's going to make it look good and like I said before it's quite easy to blend this together you can't really mess up on it because if you do you can always go back over it again I 
find that the uh, swirly method, as I call it, works out pretty good just to get it in these high and low spots because sometimes your uh, regular brush strokes are just going to go over it. It's going to leave little spots, high spots and low spots. Just get in there and swirl it around. You know, just whatever you, whatever you like. You know, it's your rules. You can make them or break them. Check your work at the end. Because if you missed any spots, you're definitely going to be able to see them. You always do touch-ups at the end. And the cool thing about this is, when you are doing your wipe down, you might pull some of these little plastic pieces up, which is okay. Just going to give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more character look. Just make sure you get the uh, paper towel pieces out of it. And periodically while you're doing this, depending on what surface you're uh, painting or brushing on, Make sure you lift it every once in a while because the last thing you want to do is have your masterpiece stuck to your table. Now with your big stump end right there, you wipe it around the circle, it seems to work pretty good. That way it gives you that nice 3D gory effect. That's pretty good. Alright. Make sure you check the work at the end. If there's anything you need to fix up, touch up, anything of that nature. But uh, we're actually looking pretty good. So we're going to let this dry and uh, we will be back with the next step. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've let this sit and dry for just a little bit. Now I will tell you that when you do this, this gel stain is still going to be tacky. So you kind of have to watch how you handle it. You may, on a couple of occasions, go to grab a hold of it and leave your hand in one place for a little while and lift back and have some paint come off on your hands. Don't freak out. That's okay. We can fix that. The next step we're going to do is we're going to dry brush the flesh tone that we've been using, that same brush, flesh tone that we used, excuse me, on our base coat. We're going back to it, but we're gonna dry brush over the top of this. In case you haven't already noticed, the layers are starting to show through. It's starting to look organic. It's starting to look less like a piece of whatever, and it's actually starting to look like a, a very distressed leg at this point. And what this is going to do is highlight some of the details that you can't see from it being darkened by the gel stain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up so I because it's easier for me to do when I'm standing up. And I'm going to take a very, you can see this, there's not hardly any flesh tone on my little palette here that we use. You can tell we're high dollar here, it's cardboard. But whatever works. It's only stupid if it doesn't work. We're going to take a very, very small amount a flesh tone and we're going to start going over what we've already done. Now I've got another paper towel here so if I think it's a little too much I can wipe it off a little bit. But this is going to highlight some of that stuff that is sticking up. It's one more thing to catch the eye. All of this stuff that we're doing, which by the way, it took us about a year and a half to come up with this paint process and actually the way we ended up discovering it was by mistake, my mistake actually. But what we are doing here is coming up with more and more layers. You may not consciously think about it when you're looking at the finished product but your eye will still catch it your mind will still know that it's there 
And that's why we do the base coats, the reds, then the, the gel stain. Now we're going over this, highlighting the stuff that's coming off of the leg. I'm not getting down into these deep parts because we're going to do some more with those here in a little bit. But all of this stuff, when it all comes together and we get finished, is really going to make an effective look. I'm kind of wanting to tone that down just a little bit right there. I had a bright spot, so I'm going to wipe that off just a little bit. This, the nice thing about it, is when we get through with this, you should be able to go straight into the next step. Don't even have to wait for it to dry. Because there's not hardly anything there. And again, like all the other steps, skin does not have brush strokes. So if you see a brush stroke, you need to do something with it to get rid of it. As we go about this, if you have mannequin pieces and you start to do these on your own, if you change the, the order that we do that, that you do these in, you're going to change the way it looks. Doesn't necessarily make it wrong by any means, but it is going to alter your finished product when you get to the end. So on one hand, don't be surprised if it doesn't come out the same if you change the order. But it's also because you're doing this by hand, you may do this by the, in the same order that we're doing it right here and yours may look a little different than ours does. Again, that doesn't hurt anything. Okay. Ready to move along. Okay, so we've finished dry brushing our leg. And again, it didn't take any time. And as a matter of fact, you can actually grab a hold of it now and it's not as tacky as it was. That's a good thing. It makes our lives a whole lot easier. You know, we're getting down to the nitty gritty now. We're going to our frack props grind. And for those of you who have never used it, I highly recommend it. It's what we use, you can use whatever you want, but this stuff here is a water-based polyurethane and it has been great for us over the years. And it gives us a very organic amber tint to our props when we paint, it over, paint over it. Plus when it dries, it's a layer of protection and it helps from chipping the paint off. So what we are going to do is coat this entire leg with Bright Props Grime. And this layer is going to be pretty thick, but not so thick that you get a bunch of air bubbles in it, hopefully. I'm not using the brush that I would ordinarily prefer to use. I'm using an old, good old fashioned chipping brush that we've had for who knows what and how long. I may take and kind of get some of the foaming pieces off so that it doesn't dry into our leg, looking like I don't know what. Nice thing about this grime, not only that it adds a protective layer on it, but it also has that glossy sheen, which in our case, in the haunted attraction industry, what we have found is we get a much better reaction out of props that are set in the dark with lights put on them, and they have a glossy sheen to them. They come across as looking more organic, even though Skin by its nature is not glossy in and of itself. But when it's under low lights, and it's got colored lights and strobes and that sort of thing, and it's got that glossy look to it, it looks really, really good. 
by the time we get done with this, generally speaking, unless if you just take, I don't know, a hammer or uh, some kind of blunt object, baseball bat or something, just start wailing on our leg here, you're not going to see much of the paint come off of it or anything like that. You would over time. After all, it is artwork, first and foremost. But for the most part, if you just take and say carrying it from one place to another and you just drop it or something accidentally, you're not going to see much damage to this. As you're doing this, make sure with the lower parts, the parts that sink in, the holes, the gaps, make sure you get down in there. You are going to be adding blood here in a little bit, but you still want to make sure you get down in there and get as much coverage on this as you can because really this is what your protective layer is, is the grime. The grime also has an amber color to it and it's translucent, so it's just one more way that it makes this leg look more fleshy and has the color we want to it. Trans World is coming up for those of you who are going to be there. And we will be there. We will have a booth set up. We've had a booth set up there for the last few years. And this right here, what we're showing you right now, is our number one seller. And, we, and I've even personally seen people post pictures of our body pieces that we had set out on display to sell, asking how we do these body pieces hoping to replicate them. Each body piece that you do will come out a little different because it's done by hand. Even if you follow the same process, that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing because especially in a market like what we have, some people like the darker colors. Some people like the lighter colors. Some people want them bloodier. Some people don't. Some people would rather they look burnt, which with a few modifications, that can be done with these. Some people would just rather have, rather have them look gory. Some of them, they want them to look more rotted out, aged. Some people want them fresh. All of these things you can do with just some minor modifications of this process that I'm showing you right here. All right, this layer we need to let dry. We need to make sure we dry this one pretty well because the next step that we're going to do is we're gonna start putting blood on this to finish it out. So we'll be back here in just a minute and we'll start with the next final touches to it whenever this is dry and we can actually handle it enough that we can put blood on it. All right, and we're back. With uh, this particular step, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the ends in perma blood. Uh, we're going to hit these uh, small spots here, the little burn spots, the big holes, uh, anything that's kind of deep in any little crevices. We're going to get in there and put this stuff in there. It's going to give it that real nasty, organic, real look to it. And uh, what we're going to do. Little, little small paintbrush. What you want to do is get into these holes. And you ain't got to use a lot. You can get it on the edge. It's all right if you do get it on the edge. It looks a little bit better. And you don't have to hit every single one because some of these little black ones that look a little burnt, it uh, it's definitely what you want. The look that you want with it makes it look a little bit more burnt or uh, rotted. But this particular step doesn't take too long. And uh, it'll come together very quickly. So just be careful of what you're doing. And if you get it in the spot that you don't want it in, if you're pretty quick about it, you can wipe it off. I'm 
stand up and tilt this towards you a little bit so it'll be a little easier to see what I'm talking about. It's it kind of nasty looking. All you gotta do is give it a little dab. That's what I mean by these big spots right here. Make sure you get enough in there. Don't get too much. But like I say, if it runs out the sides over the edge, that's cool. Because if you got rotted flesh or burnt skin or anything like that, it ain't just gonna stay contained in one little spot. And one one thing about these bigger areas, the bigger areas you do want a little bit more in there. Because if you just go over it a little bit, what it's gonna do, it's gonna give it that look that you literally just lightly paint it over something. Because when this stuff dries, it's gonna dry hard. So if there's if it's pulled up a little bit in the big spots, that'll actually be kind of good because it'll give a different layer, different texture. And like I said before, you don't have to hit every single little hole. Some of these dark ones actually look good the way they are like that. And make sure to be careful where you lay that. You don't want your perma blood to dry on a flat or uneven surface because it might actually stick and pull some of your paint off. And you don't have to go too heavy with this because when it dries, it's going to dry kind of thick. And if you come across any of your uh, flesh tone areas that we didn't get to knock down in the last step. Just put a little blood on it. A little blood always fixes everything. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to get the ends. Now the best way to do that just get up in the blood. Rub it in there. Make sure it covers everything. If this is your stump, this is going to look nasty. And once you get done with all the big ones, you can go through and hit some just random little spots. Right here, you can stop if you want to. Sometimes what we do is we like to put the uh, dripping blood off the edges here. The drips on it gives it a little, little creepier look. Goes a little farther with it, but with this one, it actually looks pretty good. I think we're gonna leave it at that. And uh, make sure I got everything off my hand here. More or less what you're going with is that's going to be your finished product. Looks pretty awesome. Alright. Well, we will catch you next time. Appreciate you tuning in. See you later. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Scary City Productions on YouTube. For more videos, subscribe to our channel.